Today's message is New Testament, Luke chapter 4, verse 4 through 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 4 through 8. As I read through today's message, I hope all of you will listen to the voice of a living God. When a great crowd was gathered and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thrones, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still, other seeds fed all good soil. It came up and yielded the crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Amen. When Jesus tried to heal the sick and save the dead and forgive the sin, it was when he was very active. A crowd from town to town came to Jesus. And one day, he delivered a parable to the crowd. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thrones, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. And Jesus stopped saying, until here. And there were so many people who listened to these messages, what they would have in their heart. Is it about farming and what messages he want to mean? They may curious the meaning of that parables on their way home. And later on, some disciplines who were curious about that and asked that what it means to Jesus. And then the Jesus gave them a very important frame to interpret these parables. First of all, seed is the message of the Lord. And paths, rock, stones, and good soil are four different types of lands, and that are the four different types of people who are hearing the message of the Lord. And that is described in the chapter 8, verse 9 through 15, which is following after the today's passage. He kindly described the meanings of the parables so we understand the meaning of the message more easily. And whenever we read these parables, we want to be a good soil to yield 100 times more than was sown. that has become kind of our wishes for our lifetime. Everybody have this kind of thought in their heart to be a good soil, to bear a lot of fruits. Then how can we be good soil? You may have this question first. Is it possible to make good soil myself? Or is it fate and innate that might be the first question. And another question will follow. If you hear the word of the Lord and became good soil and bear fruits, then what kind of fruit will it really be? At first glance, these words seem easy, but if you examine a little further, then you will come up with many more questions. So this parables of the seed fallen onto four different types of, of soil shows and describes the journey of the faith that believers are experiencing. So it is very important messages. This parables and this story describes what kind of people can have a belief and who will keep their faith in their heart for long and what result they will have after all and what is the wizard of their face. So we can find the answers to these questions throughout this story. From the very beginning of the belief to the crisis, 
we made crisis of losing faith, and despite of everything, and keeping the faith, and bearing the fruit of honor in the end. And throughout the journey, we can see and we can also understand the meaning of every step. If you think about to how can be how can you be a better believer and to be a true believer and if you think about how can you bring changes to your life and to experience the kingdom of heaven while we are living in here if you have this kind of thought in your mind then i sincerely ask you to pay more attention to today's message then let's go back to today's passage first and let's think about what is the good soil. What is the good soil? What soil is good? And our Jesus is kind enough to interpret the good soil in verse 15. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. It's very short, but delivers very important truths and method. It is very important criteria to define good soil. What is good soil? In a nutshell, good soil means a land that bears fruit. Good soils means they receive the soil seed, and the seed grow into tree, and the tree bears fruit. That's the good soil bearing the fruits, that's the good fruit. Then how does the bear, how does it bear fruit? The process is well described in three steps in verse 15. The original text uses three different verbs to tell us the spiritual process. The first step is to hear the word. And second is retain or keep it. And the third is bear the fruit. And let's deep dive into every step. So first is first. The first is our Lord message is scattered like seed. That message is delivered to everybody. The gospel is announced and everybody listening to the sound of that gospel. Many people hear the gospel. That's the beginning. That's actually the, that is the first condition of being good soil. But it is also applied to the four other types of land, all in all. Gospel fell on past rock and thrones, of course, fell on good soil as well. And the fell, and in the process of falling, there is a one key word in the context, that is, hear and listen. In the Greek word, it is akouo. It means listen carefully, listen with care. That is a kouo. If you read today's passage in original text, in Luke chapter 8, use a kouo nine different times, repeatedly. That means the author of this book used this word of a kouo with intention. First of all, at the end of this parable, our Jesus added one comment at the end. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. In this short sentence, he uses the word akouo two times. First is whoever has ears to hear. And secondly, let them hear. So he used akouo two times. When he delivers these parables, he nuances that there are those who can hear and those who can't. In, a, in another words, there are people who hear the message of the Lord 
and who take it in their heart, while those who cannot hear it. So there is distinction between two group of groups of people. When Jesus going one step further and ask the meaning of it, our Lord said that to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. And here he uses the word akko, which means hear. Hearing they may not understand, that's why he delivered the story in parables. Then he uh, interpreted the parables for his disciples. There are people who hear the sounds of the messages but un don't understand that, but there are also people who hear the messages and understand it. That means everyone who hears the gospel do not develop the belief. And going further, hearing and listening to the messages is a blessing itself. If you are heard and if you hear the messages of God, you are blessed, and that's the beginning of your journey of believing. And there is a seed fallen on the path. Some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. That's the status when people hear the messages but do not understand the meaning. The messages do not touch their heart. So this part described that type of people, and our Jesus put it in this way. The devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. Then, does this mean that there are people who are born with a destiny that they can't even hear? Does this mean that there are some people who are specially destined to be saved? and some other people who can understand the word and not say it. No matter how many times they repeatedly listen to the words, they never understand the messages. Is that what he means? To clear up this misunderstanding, Lord speaks of a lamp placed on a lampstand at the end of this parable. In the parable, our Lord said that hidden things will eventually be revealed and everything is hiding behind something will be revealed to everyone. That means our Lord hide his messages to, from the people, but he didn't hide it because he wanted to, not to be revealed in the end. He hide it hoping that will be rebuilt. And he hide it with the expectation to be rebuilt. Therefore, our Lord said that, so you have to be careful how to listen to that, taken care than how you hear. For to the one who has, more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. That's the message he added at the end of the parable. And he also repeatedly used the same Greek word of akouo. Our Lord means that what is hidden will be eventually revealed in the end. In other words, the hidden word of God will not be hidden all the time, and that is waited to be revealed, and he's waiting for somebody who revealed that hidden messages. He's waiting for his messages to be revealed. So what's important here is that how you listen is critical. Therefore, take care then how you hear. That's what Jesus says, the hidden messages of the Lord is related to the attitude of uh, audience. Depending on the attitude of the audience, it can be open or closed. Those who are seeking, they will be given, 
and those who try to find one, they will be find that. If you try to listen to it, if you want to listen to it, then you will be, you will hear. Then who will hear the message? In the parables that we are having today, before the listening, there is one decorative word. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart. That's the condition added before here. In here, there is a decorative words of a noble and good heart. But if you look it up in the Greek word, both words means good. So we have to take the messages of the Lord with a good heart. If we take the word, lo, words of the Lord with the bad intention and the wrong intention, if you try to take it out of your desire and greed, then that's not the true way to receive and listening to the word of a message. When we listen to the messages with a noble and good heart, then he will open up our ears. So the, there are two important things we have to remember when we listen to the messages. First thing is that we try to find as much opportunities as possible to listen to the messages. The messages of the Lord is a seed. Seed has the life. So to receive as many seeds as possible and to keep, to keep as many seeds as possible within us until they work to change us, that's necessary. The seed of the Lord should be scattered as much as possible. That is the first thing we have to do. And the second thing is whenever we listen to the messages, whenever the messages of the seed is scattered, we have to hear it with the heart of good, noble, and positive. And when we read and hear the messages, our spirit will open our eyes and ears. When we listen to the messages with a good heart, then the messages will be heard and that will stay within us. We try our best to, to have more chances to listen to and read the words. And we try to keep the messages around us. By doing so, we can have more seeds in our life and we can grow the seeds in our life that is necessary. And the second stage of to be good soil is keep and protect. We need to have some time for the seed to grow, settle down and grow. When we talk about good soil, we, talk, we think about state, status. But when our Lord talk about good soil, he also include the time. The good soil doesn't have a vitality in it. Vitality remains in the seed. And when the seed remains alive, and when the seed keep alive and staying longer in the land, that's the functionality that good land should do. No matter how good and healthy the land is, if it doesn't have any seed, they cannot bear fruits. But if they have a seed in some normal land, and if the seed is growing into the tree to bear the fruit, then that land will be a good soil. So the new translation says, hold fast to the seed. That's the stage when we are having the messages in our heart. And the Greek original word is kateko. That means hold fast to it and hold firmly. And there are two cases of failure in these stages in the parables. One is a fall on the rock, and the other is seed falling on the thrones. They seem to grow together with the rock or throne, but these two worst conditions um, kill the seed. And spiritually, our Jesus interpret these cases in this way. The one on the rock are those who, when they hear the words, receive it with joy, but these have no root. They believe for a while and in times of testing fall away. 
And as for what fell among the thrones, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. That means, even though we are receiving the messages with inspiration and appreciation, that messages and seed would not grow into the strong tree and that was died out in the middle. And actually, that is a reality of our belief life that we repeatedly experience. When we listen to the messages, sometimes we take the word as it is through the ears that is opened by our Lord. Sometimes we hear and take the messages that overwhelm our lives. Sometimes we take the messages very deeply and seriously. That is a blessing itself, but that didn't last within ourselves for long. When we face the difficulties, that is replaced with the concern. The messages would not live longer in our heart, but replaced with our greed and desire. Sometimes that is replaced with our physical desire or worldly desire. We repeatedly experience such things. We should create environment where the seed of messages would grow further. That's what we have to do. It's OK a y to have a s- small pieces of the word. We have to have a ground for the seed of the messages to settle down and let the seed guide us and let the seed stay within us for a long time, and that can be a power whenever we are doing some work, and that can also criticize us if we are doing something wrong. And by doing so, we can see how the seed grows within us. Going further, uh, our Bible uh, shows us the expression of patience. That means we bear the fruit with patience. The original Greek word is hippomone. That means we need to have Patience. Sometimes we have rains, strong storms, thunders, and snows. That happens to our spirit on a constant basis. Just like a pest to eat out the grain, we have such kind of a turmoil. We also go through thunderstorms, and we also go through days and night. And throughout that time, seed settle down and grow into big tree. After, withdrawing, after enduring all the difficulties, they feel the time and grow together. At the very beginning, you might doubt if the seed is alive. Sometimes you want to dig out the seed to see if it's alive. You have such kind of difficult times not to be patient. But for that long time, i s required to bear the fruits. Endurance and patience is key to the success. So good soil means people who have a seed with patience. They have to be patient for long until the seed bears the fruits. despite of all the difficulties and all odds. That's good soil. Therefore, our Lord said through Colossians, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Paul So, the trees growing in the hearts of Colossians, he saw great fruits that are growing in the hearts of Colossians. Let's sum it up. Who will have the fruits of messages? A person who listens to the word with a noble and good heart, and the one who keeps the word in the heart for long, A person who lives by holding on to the word of God with patience in any circumstance. The fruit of gospel and the fruit of the word will be born to that person. And that person equals to good soil. Then, after all that patience and time, what fruits we can expect? 
What are the fruits of our faith life and what we receive as fruits through the word? What is the final result that we want to have? Is it rich and fame or success? I don't think so. Then what should we expect for as a result of the fruit and in, 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 patience? In the Luke, the hippomone or patience appears two times. First is in the Luke chapter 8, verse 15, which is today's message. And the other place is chapter 21. And Luke chapter 21 says like this, stand firm and you will win life. And another translation says that by your endurance, you will gain your lives. Yes, that is right. The seed that comes into our heart is the thing that we don't have and the things that the world do not have. That is the, not the life that the world is having. So in the seed, uh, the life is delivered to us. If the seed bear the fruit, then we have the true life in it. That's the life of everlasting. We will get the soul. The true life of fruit that the world do not have is growing in ourselves. That is the result of the message that we take care of. In the parables of today's passage, our Lord said that to you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything is in parables. He says the secret of the kingdom. In a nutshell, the fruit that we'll harvest in the end is the kingdom of God. He has given the secret of the kingdom to us, but those outside, everything is in parables. But we can find the secret in the and the, through the messages, and we can achieve it through the messages as well. Where do you find the true peace? Where can you find the true joy? When the message of the Lord grows within it and bears the fruit, in the heart of the fruit there is a life and there is a true life. There is the kingdom of heaven that is not known to us. The principle of the kingdom and principle of our Lord will come through the true life which will be bare in the fruit of the messages. The secret to have it is a lesson to the messages and to have it and to endure it. In the process of that, we can have the secret of the kingdom. Having the patience means that the peace, joy, and the kingdom of heaven will not be given to us overnight, but it requires time and patience. Peace and security and joy and kingdom of heaven can be achieved within us as we nurture it and grow it over a long time with the patience. We don't need to be haste and we don't need to be hurry. We can keep messages and we can hold on to the messages despite of all odds. That's what we have to do. That is the secret of good soil. My beloved church members, please do not be discouraged or disheartened. Please hold firmly, strongly onto the messages of the Lord and wait until it will be realized in our messages. That's what our Lord wants us to do. Let's pray together. The Lord of love, your message today, give us chance to look back on the journey of a life of a belief. Thank you, Lord. We think whether we are listening to your messages with a good and noble heart, thank you for giving us the chance. We imagine the fruit and result of the messages. While we are expecting and expecting for the kingdom of heaven growing in our heart, let us, uh, be, let us live with the patience. We pray in your name. Amen.